Welcome back to Biotechniques on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the principles of primer design for PCR, polymerase chain reaction. So how do you get the specific forward and reverse primers uh, given a, a DNA sequence such as the one shown here? And this DNA sequence is the sequence for the gene or one of the actin proteins, okay? And we can tell that it's a gene, first of all, because it has T's in it, so it's, it's from the DNA, has thymine. Also, the first three-letter, or three-nucleotide uh, triplet here is ATG. This is actually the triplet code for methionine. If we imagine the mRNA from this, it'd be AUG. That's our start codon. So this is methionine. Down here on the three-prime end, we have the nucleotide triplet TGA. As a codon in mRNA, it would be UGA, which is a stop codon. So this is the entire gene sequence for actin. How do we get the primers from this? Well, in this video, I'm going to focus on, actually, the primers that you would need if you wanted to actually amplify the entire gene. So if I wanted every nucleotide amplified from this initial A to this terminal A down here at the three prime end, how do I actually get the entire gene amplified? Okay. And this is going to be useful if we ever wanted to clone the gene. So for example, if we amplify, isolate the gene, we can force its expression in a bacterium. Um, that's where this would be useful again. Um, but any, any application where we wanted all of this. Now the reason I mentioned I'm going to focus on that is there's, a, there's some websites such as this one right here. This is actually a, a primer design website. We can actually go to this web page. So this right here, this is a website called Primer Blast actually move this over a little bit. So Primer Blast is a website that you can use to actually to uh, the optimize the design of your primers. Okay. Now what you can do is you can take your sequence, so let's actually get that, so from this A to this A, copy that, we'll paste it in here. Let me explain a few things. So here's our entire uh, sequence that we want to amplify. Okay. Now you can choose the PCR product size. Okay. Um, for example, uh, with these parameters, the, the particular uh, segment of DNA that would get amplified would have a minimum of 70 nucleotides and a maximum of 1,000. Okay? Uh, this tells you how many, how many primer pairs to actually return in the results. And down here, you can actually change the, uh, the, the minimum melting temperature, maximum melting temperature, and optimum, and the difference between the, the max and min. Um, for example, we can, if we want to get a lot of primers, we can lower this to 50, raise this up to 75, and give a, a max temperature, melting temperature difference of 5. Generally, things below this you're not going to mess with. But this technique uh, of optimizing your primers is not good if you actually want to obtain the entire gene because what it's going to do is optimize the primer design. For example, this is going to spit out probably 10 different primer pairs. I've already got the results page right here. These are your detailed primer report. It tells you information about all of these. Here's uh, the first pair. Th these are uh, supposedly the most optimum uh, pair of primers. The product length is going to be 98 nucleotides. That's our PCR product once you did the amplification on this tells you for the plus strand, this is actually the, uh, the coding strand, uh, this is the forward primer, and for the minus strand or the template strand, this is your reverse primer, the length and so on and so forth. Okay, But here's the problem. Let's find this sequence of nucleotides in our DNA sequence. Okay, So let's find it. Command F, it's already in there. Here is our where our forward primer is going to bind. And so basically what this means, it's going to amplify towards the right. Okay, So all this actually, that entire sequence right there is going to get lost. It's not going to get amplified. And that's really bad if what your goal is, is to amplify the entire gene. Okay, That's really bad. So rather what you can do is you can use this other website. Um, and it's really easy. What you can do is, let's go ahead and click here, go to this web page. All right, so what this, what this website's going to allow you to do is it's actually going to allow you to get the reverse, the complement, or the reverse complement of DNA sequences. And I'll explain why that's going to be important in a minute. Let's go back here and let's design our forward primer. So our forward primer, I'm actually going to design and let's actually do green. I actually do blue. Let's do blue for our forward primer. If your goal is to amplify the entire gene sequence, all of it starting at the initial methionine 
uh, coding nucleotide triplet, then what you're going to do is you're going to start with that first nucleotide and count over as, as many nucleotides as you want to be in the forward primer. A good rule of thumb is to t you typically start with around 20 nucleotides. So here's what we're going to do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this sequence right here as is, that's going to be our forward primer. Okay. That's the forward primer. When you design the forward primer in a PCR amplification, as long as the sequence that you have is the, the, the coding sequence, the coding strand that is, your forward primer, you don't have to do anything to it. You just count over roughly 20 nucleotides, and then that's your forward primer sequence. When you order that primer, this is the sequence that you, that you type in. Okay, So I can even make a note of this. Let's go ahead and put in a text box. This is going to be our forward primer. Let me actually turn this blue and then this right here is our forward primer sequence and again like I said with the forward primer you don't have to do anything to this okay now with the reverse primer you do have to do a little bit more work okay and by the way I'll go ahead and denote that this is the five prime end and down here this is our three prime end all right I'm going to make another space down here for our reverse primer which I think I will do in purple. All right, so let's figure out how we get the reverse primer. Again, you have to do a little bit more work with this. The reverse primer, if I want the entire gene sequence, then I should obviously have the end of this uh, contained within the reverse primer. Well, what I can do is I can now count over, let's do 20 nucleotides again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, so this sequence right here, this is not going to be directly my reverse primer. But the way I can actually get the reverse primer sequence is I'm going to copy this sequence. I'm going to go back to this website, paste that sequence in there, and what I'm going to click on is reverse complement. Reverse complement, and here's my sequence right there. Okay, so I'm going to copy that, and then I can just more or less paste that right in here, in this sequence right here. And that is my, my reverse primer. And I can check to make sure that it makes sense. For example, the first nucleotide here, the T, should be complementary to the last nucleotide here, A. And then this A, this T, this C, this G. And so these two sequences, the forward primer up here and reverse primer, they're both 20 nucleotides. These are my two sequences that I can then order. Um, from a primer ordering website. And there's lots of different primer ordering websites that you can use. Okay, So again, the forward primer, very easy to get. Reverse primer, you have to do a little bit more work. But whenever I use these primers in a PCR reaction, this amplification is going to get me the entire sequence. And so then I can take that sequence after it's pure and so forth and I can sequence it, make sure it's correct, and then I can use it for various applications such as cloning and so on and so forth. You could even use it for restriction digest if you wanted, uh, things like that. Okay. Uh, the one thing I will mention is that although some, uh, some uh, schools of thought will have you start with 20 nucleotides, 20 is pretty common, you can actually have much bigger primers uh, than that even. Um, sometimes people use 25 MERS, so those are primers with uh, 25 nucleotides, 30 mers, even up to 40 mers. I've actually I've actually used a 40 mer before uh, for one gene, um, but you to do that you just extend the length of this chain, okay? And you just repeat the same process over and over again. All right. So hopefully this video made sense. So in conclusion, if you're going to use one of these primer design, these optimizer websites, these are really only good if you want a if you're okay with a partial sequence of the gene. And really the application of that is really if all you're doing is trying to see if something actually amplified. And there are some applications and experiments where that's okay. But for anything else where you actually require the entire gene sequence, you actually have to use the nucleotides on the 5 prime end and the 3 prime end so that when you do the PCR amplification you get the entire gene. And the forward primer, easy to get, it's just as is, assuming that this is the coding strand. However, the reverse primer, you have to find the reverse complement of it, and you can use uh, this website right here. I'll post the links to these two websites in the description of this video, but I will say another way that you can actually easily find this uh, reverse complement website is if you actually just go to Google and type in get reverse 
complement. It's this Harvard website right here. And that's the same website that we just looked at. This website can also be useful if all you also need is the reverse or the complement, but we just use the reverse complement to get the primer. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.